Today's video is not so much news and more so speculation as well as advice as to how I think Tesla should manage their never-ending battery problem, which of course is prohibiting this accelerated transition to sustainable energy. It's not a matter of pricing, it's not a matter of subsidies or tax credits, it's not even really a matter of how cheap EVs can be. What truly is the bottleneck is production capacity. I emphasize that a lot on this channel, so that's why I think it should be talked about more in the EV community as a whole. And looking at Tesla's current lineup. You know, they've been working really, really hard at mass producing these 4680 batteries and they haven't delivered any vehicles with them yet, but they are built for scale as a whole and simultaneously Tesla has not changed their tune on how 4680s are not meant to replace all batteries in all vehicles, at least not in the short term. If anything, they have been doubling and increasing all of their battery orders from existing suppliers. So in 2022, they're supposed to be buying twice as many batteries from Panasonic and CATL as they did in 2021, which means, yeah, that's more lithium iron phosphate prismatic batteries, that's more 2170 cells, and the new Model S and X are still using the 1865 batteries because, you know, they've improved the density, they've improved their stability over the years, and there's nothing really inherently wrong with that design. They still get the job done, and a lot of people still use those batteries and enjoy them in their six-figure vehicles. So why change that up? Why would you divulge batteries from the prototype line into an already existing supply chain that is providing you batteries at good prices with proven track records, it makes sense for Tesla to keep using a wide range of batteries for their vehicles based on how many vehicles can we actually make. Let's not get picky about let's only make vehicles with certain types of batteries. No, as long as they're healthy and can support supercharging and can last a really, really long time, we don't care what the cylindrical dimensions are, which is what I wanted to dive into in today's video, because there's been a lot of talk about how the 4680 batteries aren't quite ready ready yet and they're trying to mass produce them but they're trying to iron out the kinks and figure out how to mass produce them at extreme scale and we've even heard Elon and Tesla say that they're planning on starting production in Berlin and in Texas with 2170 batteries instead of 4680 because they already have lots of those that are already using them in mass production of Model Ys at Fremont, Model Ys in China. They're using this chemistry because it's been proven to work and clearly they're selling as many as they can make with the 2170 batteries so so if you gotta start the factory up and your 4680 batteries aren't quite ready yet because it's proving harder and harder to mass produce them, why not start with the 2170 batteries? You know, it makes sense because you want the factory up and running, delivering vehicles and bringing in revenue for the company, but I'm actually here to propose that Tesla continue using 2170 batteries for all Model Ys, no matter where they're built, for a very specific reason, which many of you may disagree with me and that's fine, but this mainly came inspired from the point that Tesla started sending out notices to people people that reserved rear-wheel drive long-range Model Ys, which was an option that Tesla actually took orders for right after the Model Y was unveiled. It was supposed to be $47,000 and go over 300 miles on a charge, and a lot of people reserved it. A lot of people really wanted that option because they knew it would have the best range, and Tesla never made it. And there were still people holding out hope with their reservations, but Tesla reached out to all of them and said, sorry, the tier you ordered is not available. You gotta pick either dual motor or performance. And that kind of of brought closure to that never built model that there was a lot of rumors whether or not they were actually going to build it and it sounds like at least in America they decided it was not worth it and they don't want to go through with it but that of course is sad because I want there to be more affordable Model Y options but on top of that it really makes me wonder how are there going to be two US factories both building dual motor and performance Model Ys some of which are rumored to adopt 4680s but they're not going to have enough 4680s to convert Fremont and Texas over simultaneously so how are both of these vehicles going to exist? I know there's speculation on Tesla making a new tier that's even higher than performance, you know, Model Y Mega, Model Y Ultra or whatever, that's like $70,000 and that has 4680 batteries and great range and great performance, which just kind of complicates the lineup a little bit too much in my opinion and also kind of detracts from the idea that, you know, 4680 batteries are supposed to improve affordability and they're built for scale. So you got to start there and then work your way down, but it's still going to take a long, long time before you're able to switch over all of Fremont to 4680 batteries for the Model Y and also offer dual motor, long range, and performance models from Texas. I think this is just going to be a really complicated transition if you're trying to make one factory building 4680 Model Ys and one factory building 2170 Model Ys if you're not interested in offering lower tiers like a long range rear wheel drive, which is what I thought would have made sense at Fremont or even a standard range Model Y, but Tesla canceled that, they've scrapped that, and at all of the lithium 
lithium iron phosphate batteries they're ordering seem to be diverted to making rear wheel drive model 3 options which are now delayed until the end of 2022 for new orders so i have a feeling there's not really a standard range model y coming anytime soon so i'm going to suggest that 4680 batteries should actually make their debut in the cybertruck first i've actually been thinking a lot about the cybertruck ever since elon dropped some more information on it how they're starting with the quad motor and it's kind of reminding me that you know we're closer to cybertruck production than we realize because giga texas is finalizing their design and they're just about ready to start producing model y's once model y's are being produced that's when construction on the cybertruck assembly line can begin and i do think that the fact that they can skip the paint shop and they can skip a lot of the complexities with the model y design and just focus on exoskeleton structural pack which is something the cybertruck really does need whereas the structural pack on the model y will be nice and it will improve weight and improve range and everything but we've already proven with tesla's dated technology of 2170 batteries and not having a structural pack that you can get 330 miles of range on those options and people will pay 58 59 60 thousand dollars a piece for that dated tech and the estimated deliveries were pushed out until november before tesla started removing estimated delivery dates so almost sold out until the end of 2022 and that's with your old non-4680 technology cybertruck has an insane amount of demand there's rumors that they've surpassed 2 million reservations and i'm sure that the demand will be even higher once deliveries begin and customers start realizing this is a real product it's no longer a prototype it's no longer theoretical tesla can actually start charging whatever they end up charging for the quad motor it could be 80 or 90 thousand dollars and the dual motor which will go over 300 miles on a charge that they could easily charge 60 65 thousand dollars for and it would still have way better specs than the rivian which costs more way more durability than an f-150 lightning and a bigger bed and rear wheel steering and all the futuristic tech and next generation computers and cameras they're embedding in this truck once it starts to become a reality i anticipate another big surge of orders and essentially what i'm saying is if you can reserve 4680 batteries for a vehicle like the quad motor cyber truck which is going to need a lot because they wanted to get it to 500 miles of range or whatever that's going to need a ton of batteries but you're going to be able to charge easily 80 or 90 thousand dollars for that vehicle with fairly thick margins because no paint shop to worry about and hopefully they're able to scale the production of the truck very effectively because of how simple it will be to manufacture possibly that redesigned wiring infrastructure we saw tesla have some patents for and it will still be one of like the best range numbers of any ev and it won't be able to be matched even at the ninety thousand dollar price point so if you can divulge all of your 4680 production into the cybertruck and into the tesla semi you could actually start delivering on all these vehicles you've been promising for years and okay the model y may not get 4680 batteries but here's the thing model y is already selling like hotcakes and it's doing great with the 2170 cells if you start improving the range or giving it 4680s okay you might reduce the price of manufacturing the model y a little bit but i still personally think you would have better margins on a 65 thousand or ninety thousand dollar cyber truck that there's clearly a lot of pent-up demand for and you've got a 4680 facility nearly up and running at giga texas as we speak and already an operational one in fremont so you've got most of your 4680 battery production in the united states eventually in berlin yes they'll have 4680s being built there and the european market is different i'm sure you could switch to 4680s there get the model y cheaper to operate and the european market will appreciate the range benefits but in the united states there's just so much pent-up demand for this truck and a lot of people waiting on the tesla semi i think divulging all of these 4680 batteries which are going to have high energy density they're mass sensitive so they'll improve on weight savings which matter a lot with vehicles like the truck and the semi so i think prioritizing them in these vehicles makes a ton of sense they'll benefit from the structural pack they'll benefit from the energy density whereas 4680 in the model y is kind of giving the cream of the crop batteries to something that's already selling insanely well and you're delivering so many of them already so that's why i would say divert all 4680 battery production to cybertruck and tesla semi because you can sell those at really high profit margins people will spend much more money on a dual or quad motor cybertruck than they will on just a dual motor model y and yes some of the rear wheel steering adaptive air suspension and the vault and all that will probably make it more expensive to build but i think you can charge a lot more comfortably and you'll probably be able to sell every cybertruck you can build for years and years and years so the reason i'm pitching this is because it sounds like tesla is having a harder time scaling 4680 batteries than they thought so if you're going to have a limited number of 4680 batteries put them in vehicles that need them to 
exist where the Model Y does not need 4680 batteries to sell well. As long as you've got healthy and large volume production of 2170 batteries from your existing suppliers, which Tesla does, they're already planning on starting production at Texas and Berlin with the traditional batteries. Just keep using those because you'll know you'll sell every one you can make. And I'm not saying you can never switch to 4680 batteries and anything else. It's just wait until you can actually like catch up on Cybertruck demand, which I think is going to take years and years before you're actually, you know, building a Cybertruck and you don't have a buyer lined out for it right away. That's when you can say, okay, we have some excess of 4680 batteries. Now let's apply them to something like the Model Y and improve the range and wait there. But essentially, I'm just saying the Cybertruck could be a tremendous cash cow for Tesla as soon as they figure out that assembly line and making sure you have as many 4680 batteries for it as possible will help you in the long run delivering your best product ever as Tesla has called it. And I don't think the Model Y needs this type of attention when it's already sold out until the end of 2022 and that's with dated battery technology. So there's no other fallback battery for the Cybertruck in semi. You know, they need the 4680, they need the structural pack, they cannot exist without that. So that's why I would say they should get first dibs on the limited number of 4680s out there. You guys disagree? Do you think there's some benefits to prioritizing the Model Y with 4680 batteries first? And do you think the Cybertruck and Semi should wait before they get the access to the batteries they need? Feel free to let me know down below. Thank you all to everyone supporting me on Patreon and helping me save up for my Tesla. And to everyone else, I appreciate you just for watching. It really does help. Have a great day and take care.